I'm still processing it because it was a pretty shocking thing to see play out in real time. Because it almost, I don't know if you saw the whole set. It actually started off pretty okay. She turned up on set in some like weird motorized spider gizmo type of shit. She looks amazing coming on stage. It was actually quite a good set. I'm not going to lie. The set was pretty decent. And from what I remember watching it in the background when I was doing my shit, I guess she thought it was quite decent. And in the middle, obviously things went fucking haywire. So I'm going to play a clip for you that shows you um, Grimes going through some difficult time out there playing at Coachella. And obviously I'm going to comment on what actually happened and some of the backlash. Just play the tune, you fucking donut. I'm trying to do the math. this girl where all the song tempos are double speed and look I, at this girl i've not practiced the math just so press the fucking math. button and it but takes them I off you dickhead to, i am going to handle this all right let's try this again y'all don't judge me for being bad at calculating things This is worse than Frank Ocean. This is worse than Frank Ocean. Okay, you get the gist. She was a fucking horror show. Um, and what needs to be said about this? I've always had the feeling anyway. I've always had the feeling that the 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 worst DJs in the world have way more in common the worst DJs in the world that never get paid to book play anywhere have way more in common with the DJs that get paid the most at the top end I feel like there's a way more you know overlap in their style of play in their attitude towards DJing with the people at the very bottom and the people at the very top but I think the people in the middle are better than the majority of the people at the top but the majority of the people at the top make all the money so all the money gets squeezed up to the top and there's the rest of it everyone else has to kind of fight for the scraps but the guys in the middle the guys and girls in the middle are the ones that are sick the ones that are top aren't so but in this particular case this isn't one of them this is just somebody not practicing not taking their set seriously and doing the bare minimum because in this scenario there is no reason why she would have turned up to this set at coachella playing on pioneer cdjs industry standard pioneer you know mixer industry standard probably pioneer head whatever right industry standard gear that she's already used to nothing in that setup is shocking or new to her even if you've got a fucking you know two channel controller from pioneer at home they work in a similar type of way especially if you want if you have a standalone xdj one so nothing would have been a surprise for her there it's only a surprise because she hasn't practiced at all. She hasn't touched a turntable since she got booked to play at Coachella. She didn't once go through her set list. Maybe she went through her set list in Record Box and just reordered some of the tunes because Record Box is the is the is the kind of, is the program you use to kind of um, make sure that your records are sequenced and programmed and beat matched properly and whatever, so that when you play them on the CDJs, they get recognized and you can mix them and shit. So she most likely made a playlist on Rekordbox. I can believe that. But I don't think Graham spent a single minute 
practicing that set which is quite crazy when you think about it because I'm an up and coming DJ I do my thing in my local fucking circuit just in pubs and bars nowhere crazy and I practice my sets <laughs> I'm playing for people who don't want me to be there most of them are, have their backs turned to me they're stuffing their face with burgers and fucking chips covered in ketchup I'm getting paid $50 maybe $150 on a good day at most and I'm practicing my set before I go. I'm running it. I'm, I'm putting it in record boxes as a playlist. I'm running it through my MIDI player to listen to it. I might even book a pirate session and play it out loud to hear how the songs sound. And then I might reorder some things or change some things around or just scrap the whole set. There's been even occasions when I was playing in this particular pub in where I live, near where I live, where we had this quote unquote residency, or as Brennan would say, we had a residency where we'd play every Friday and every Saturday pretty good you know i think occasion because it got me to play in front of people even though it was a pub it's still important to play in front of fucking human beings because unfortunately djing you can't just do it at home alone you have to kind of play in front of people to kind of get better that's how you really you know understand you know how to read a crowd where to go when when, when you're in certain places how to get a crowd like amped up how to bring them down blah 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 and just improve even your technical skills under that pressure it kind of really helps a lot better to kind of it kind of you know quickens your learning curve than playing at home so i've had occasions when i'm playing in a pub every friday and saturday and i've never repeated a set i would purposely go home and re-download a whole bunch of new songs a whole bunch of other songs to dig through and go through the entire thing this is playing at pub set so i'm sure if i'm doing this much effort playing for gigs where i'm getting paid 150 dollars i'm sure there's guys and girls out there who are doing far more than me they're getting paid 500 euros and they would jump at the opportunity to do this set and here's grimes one of the biggest stages in the world festival wise great profile imagine even for someone like grimes who's amazing she goes on there she does the bare minimum doesn't try doesn't practice then tries to blame it on an assistant and somebody else that did it throw them under the bus of course no no fucking accountability at all and if anything looking at those clips anyway she made the situation far worse by shouting and apologizing on the screen on the on the microphone like it legitimately was un you know unsettling it was annoying she kind of killed the vibe because she just kept going on and pointing out the mistake sometimes barreling through and just kind of getting through it and jumping into the next tune. Okay, I fucked up that mix. Let's jump to the next one. Works. I've played in places where sometimes the left tempo slider on the CDJ doesn't work. So effectively, you can't mix out of that left-hand side. You have to just mix out of the right-hand side. Okay, cool, whatever. You make it work. Or sometimes the mixer doesn't really work. You make that work as well. So I think the whole thing is just a representation of just how little care attention that she points that set she didn't practice she didn't run through her songs she did nothing and there's real lack of technical know-how about how to use the equipment because that issue that she has with the double speed thing could be sip sorted out with a couple clicks on the cdj if you used it before you'd know exactly what to click to make sure that double speed thing that she's complaining about goes away it's not too difficult and the fact that she's screaming and crying about on stage is absolutely crazy and i've seen some people online changes discourse into oh this is why female dj should never get booked in places but i think she's very unique in her not giving a fuckness and also being a complete waste of time because i also can't wrangle in my head how this is the same grimes that made fucking visions the same grimes that made art angel art angel sorry i can't figure it in my mind like how is was was that all that stuff ghost produced because how was she this dumb but then she created two of the most important albums in modern history right like legitimately those albums probably remain or belong in the album hall of fame they will probably be in those like rolling stones greatest albums of the last 20 years 20 you know in, in the 20th in the 21st century or whatever right in our angels and fucking visions how does somebody that creates those albums how are they how how can somebody make those two albums not be able to play on a pair of cdjs and CDJs nowadays are so advanced, especially the higher up ones, one, 3,000 plus, whatever they are, it's impossible to fuck them up, especially with the sync buttons, especially with little tricks that you can do. It's really hard to fuck up a set. The only way you can fuck up a set is the sequencing of the tunes. You go from maybe 
one really fast one, one really slow, like, you know, you don't really get the sequencing right. Or sometimes you don't go as far as mixing in key, whatever it may be. But at this level, for an artist of her caliber, not to be able to play on CDJs is fucking a nightmare. It also makes it funnier when you think about how much she's been pushing the whole AI thing in music. She's pushing the whole AI thing in music, but I think you could run an AI script of some regard to mix that set that she did better than she did it herself. So in some ways, in some ways, the person that's screaming the most for AI, they're probably the one that's going to be replaced the quickest because she's a shadow of her former self. It's pretty embarrassing to say. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty embarrassing. I heard they did cut her step short. I didn't watch towards the end. I heard they did cut it short, which makes sense because, you know, you can't have somebody just screaming over the microphone on that sort of stage. That stage is meant for fucking people dancing and singing, having a good time. And here she is with her fucking really weaselly, you know, nasally fucking annoying voice screaming. And it's also nuts to think about. This woman has three kids, doesn't she? With Elon Musk. Like this woman's a mum. That's a wild thing to think about. Like, she's not even like, you know, this sort of act was cute when she was literally in her early 20s, but she's a mum. So it's not even cute anymore. You kind of just look a bit sad, you know? Like, to take the opportunity and then not do right by it and not kind of show out. It's a really strange situation to kind of see. Now, she's got a chance to redeem herself because the Coachella lineup mirrors itself and repeats the following weekend. So she has a chance to redeem herself this weekend. Will she do that? Who knows? Will the Coachella people say, you know what? We're good on you. We're all set on fucking Grimes. You can go away. Or will she get a chance to redeem herself? I'm not really too sure. All you have to do to redeem herself, really, is just make sure she plays all the songs in sequence, one by one. No one's asking for her to mix them. No one's asking for her to add effects and go crazy, scratching, wheel ups. Nah, just play your songs one after the other, please, if you don't mind. Load them up, you know. And they keep it going from there because apart from that, she's fucking useless. It's absolutely insane to see how useless she is. But for someone like myself, I become a DJ, it gives me hope. It encourages me because it lets me know that thinking, that feeling I always had about these guys aren't practicing. These guys aren't record digging. Like, and again, this is, maybe it's a passion thing as well. Maybe it's like a comfortability thing. If you're a DJ like she is, and she's probably got paid, let's say, anywhere between like 50 to 100,000 for this set. It's really hard to give a fuck as much as I'm giving a fuck, right? Because although the 150 pounds for my drink token or whatever is not, you know, a big deal, it's still cool to go and play. So I'm literally going there to play where I'm playing with a sense of like glee, right? I'm actually excited to go. Maybe these guys aren't excited. Maybe they're going through the motions because it's literally a job. But I still think if that's the case, you still need to respect your job. I've I've come to that realization in my in my later years that I was really, you know, flipping and just obtuse and a bit of a dickhead when it came to jobs. I take them, I wouldn't take them seriously because I always felt like they were beneath me. But it's like, no, no, no. Always respect the position you're at at the moment. The other stuff think about later, but always respect the position you're at in that moment. Don't take it for granted. And I think people like her have taken it for granted because again, she made a seminal piece of work. A monumental piece of work that will go down in history in our angels and visions but ever since then it's been fucking downhill and she's really been coasting along on her reputation only because i don't think i've ever heard a a new grimes album since our angels probably not heard a single one so maybe that is the case that she's been coasting on that early popularity when she was you know somewhat popular back in those days but jesus christ man this set was fucking crazy um, hearing it play in the background when she's fucking fucking it up with the fucking selections and the uh, supposed beat grids and the double time BPM. I'm like, God almighty, bro. How can you not like not being able to go through a set before you play such a big gig does makes absolutely no sense to me. But you know, some people are pieces of shit. Some people are absolute pieces of shit and they don't take anything seriously. And they, they get surprised when suddenly the opportunities fucking dry up again, they get absolutely surprised. They're like, oh my God, I had no idea this was going to happen. It's like, bruh, bruh, come on, come on, bruh, have some fucking shame.